my fellow beings, my name is Amanda, and as you can see, I have a new studio. My husband and my mother-in-law helped create a little space for me, and my husband put up all of my lovely stuffed animals. Many of them I made myself, but <laughs> he decorated it. I don't know if it's going to stay this way, but you know, it's cute, and so I decided to keep it this way for right now. So I'm excited to have this little space that's just mine that I can do these videos and not have to move around the house like constantly and set things up, take things down. So it's really exciting. So this week I was going to do a video on creating a vision board. My therapist wanted me to create a vision board basically that showed off places that I've lived that make me happy so that I can look at it at night before going to bed and that I could have better dreams because I am traveling to my favorite places on earth. So I realized that it would be kind of pointless to make a video about my vision board for things to make me sleep better if I didn't tell you why I was sleeping so poorly to begin with. So that is why this week's video is going to be on night terrors, which sound just as great as you think they are. So I started having night terrors when I was in college. So I was actually pretty old for someone who starts having night terrors. Night terrors generally are found in younger children, like very young, up to three years old, maybe to five. And then it kind of goes away as the brain develops, they tend to go away. But there are a few lucky ones that develop night terrors as they get older and that would be me and usually those are caused because of a mental illness or a medication that you're taking or trauma in your life those can be reasons why night terrors develop but I'll go into that a little bit later so the question is what is a night terror well a night terror is a form of parasomnia or classified as an arousal disorder which happens during non REM sleep and they usually happen in the first three to four hours of sleep, which is fantastic. So shortly after you fall asleep, you can have a lovely night terror. And the person will seem as if they wake up, their eyes will open, a lot of times they will scream or yell, sit up, they may flail, they may get out of bed, and it's kind of hard to get them back into bed. But usually they don't remember what's happening at all because they're technically still asleep. Then there's the few of us who very much remember what's going on during night terrors. And for me, it's usually a man standing in the hallway, a man standing over my bed, spiders crawling all over the bed, someone breathing on me, things like that. And I remember it and I wake up and I freak out and I'm in my room, I'm in my space, I recognize my space, but there's something there that shouldn't be there. And then I freak out. So that's my night terrors. Most night terrors only last a few minutes, but some can last up to a half hour to 40 minutes. So it can be a terrifying experience that lasts a very long time. And sometimes it's more terrifying for the person that's in the room with them than it is for the person experiencing it. But for me, it is, very scary to see like a kitted out samurai standing in the hallway just glaring at you or a guy with no lips breathing on you. It gets really scary for me at least. Now night terrors can be hard to predict. There's nothing really that you can be like oh today is gonna be the day that I'm gonna have a night terror and a lot of times they just happen and they can happen maybe once or twice a year or they can happen multiple times a week. It just depends on the individual and the situation that they're in. The thing with night terrors within adults is that less than 2% of adults actually experience night terrors. So I'm one of those few lucky human beings that <laughs> experience night terrors. The good thing is, is that less than 1% of people over 65 experience night terrors. So for me, that tells me that eventually they will go away and I really want them to go away. Though I still have, you know, 30 years to wait 
in order to get rid of them. So, you know, it's gonna be a while. But I hope they go away soon. <laughs> Adults who have a history of sleep terrors or night terrors are usually the ones who have them later on in life. But night terrors can be triggered by stress, sleep deprivation, or the development of another sleep disorder. So, yay. More sleep disorders, which I have a few. So, you know, that's fun. And it's also known that uh, sleep that night terrors can be caused by migraines as well. So that's another thing that I have going for me. So the question that a lot of people ask, what are the symptoms of night terrors? And that could be easily said by saying that the very first sign of a sleep terror or a night terror is that the person sits up and they're crying or screaming in the night. People with night terrors can also stare blankly, flail or thrash in bed, breathe rapidly, have an increased heart rate, be flushed and sweaty, seem confused, get up, jump on the bed, or run around the room, become aggressive if a partner or family member tries to keep them from running or jumping. I know for me, when I have a night terror, I flail around a lot, I scream, I'm trying to fight off whatever is in the room. And my poor husband, he tries to tackle me to get me onto the bed because I can get really violent. And luckily I'm not that strong, so he doesn't get hurt by me. But if it was the other way around and it was my husband that had night terrors, I could easily get hurt by him flailing around. And so what they do suggest is that you don't try and wake the person up. What they do suggest is to calmly talk to the person, try and get them to go back to bed or to lay down. And the person generally will lay back down and go to sleep. And most of them will not even remember the incident at all. So that's a good thing. I would like to not remember any of my night terrors. And there are quite a few that I don't remember because my husband will tell me the next day, like, do you remember your night terror? You were like screaming at something in the hallway and flailing and I'm like, no, thankfully. I did not remember that one, so. But sorry for waking you up in the middle of the night and making you lose sleep because of me. Additionally, people with other sleep disorders or parasomnias like sleep apnea or restless leg syndrome or nighttime asthma, they can also have night terrors. And the thing is, is that they have found that a lot of people that have obstructed breathing in any way can cause night terrors to develop more than in people that have beautiful airways and they can breathe perfectly. So if you are suffering from night terrors, it is suggested that you go and see a sleep therapist or have a sleep study done so that you can see whether or not you have something like nocturnal asthma or sleep apnea. So you may be wondering, okay, I have night terrors, they're not pleasant, or you don't remember them and your partner isn't getting any sleep because of them. You may be wondering, when should you go and see a doctor? Generally, I always say that if you have concerns about anything and you're not sure if it's normal, go and see a doctor. I'm not a doctor, so don't take medical advice from me, okay? I'm just giving facts out here. But if you are having more than two episodes a week, you're having injuries because of those episodes, your night terrors are accompanied by sleepwalking or sleep talking or sleep moving, you have disrupted sleep because you are staying up all night screaming at things and in the daytime you are now tired and you can't function properly, or if they begin when you are an adult or in your adolescent years. So someone like me, who started in college, I did go and see a doctor. Luckily, not so luckily, I have family members that suffer from night terrors and so I was able to get advice from them on how to deal with it and how to function throughout the day when I have night terrors. But it is important to go and see a doctor because you wanna make sure that there's not an underlying condition that is causing it, such as seizures or sleep apnea is there a cure for night terrors? Not really. There are medications that you can take to make sure that you sleep all the way through the night, but it is suggested that if you are not having more than one episode or two episodes a week, you're not getting injured by it, them, you're not having tiredness or inability to function during the day, that just dealing with it is generally what happens. 
But if you have any of the problems that I was talking about before, I do highly suggest going to see a specialist and getting the proper medication to help you to sleep all the way through the night. Because mine doesn't happen every single night, I generally don't need anything to help me. Though because I have PTSD and um, night terrors, I do take medication that helps me sleep through the night and reduces the fight or flight instinct that I have so that I can actually sleep. But generally, the only way that you're gonna be able to help with night terrors is to know what is the underlying cause of those night terrors. So is it an underlying health condition? Is it some form of trauma? Is it migraines? Is it something else? In order to properly diagnose and treat night terrors, you actually need to know what's causing them. So if you are suffering from night terrors, I highly suggest that you go and see a specialist. Night terrors are not fun. I do not like them. Though I have had some interesting stories with them. Like one time I was on a trip with my sister and we were in a hotel room and my bed was closest to the door and I woke up and there was that samurai guy that I see quite a bit and he was standing full war armor standing by the door. I scream, I jump up out of bed, I leap from my bed to my sister's bed and just grab my sister. My sister who is used to me having night terrors just pulls a blanket over me. She's like, it's okay, it's okay. She says she doesn't remember any of it. <laughs> and then I'm like, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. Cause then I come out of it, I go back to bed and it was fine. Then there was another time that there was the lipless man who was breathing on me and I leapt out of the bed and I, as my husband said, I whale flopped on him. So I just went straight up and just slammed into him. And uh, that was a fun way to get woken up was me doing that. I've had it where I have completely flipped out, ripped all the blankets off the bed because there were spiders crawling everywhere in the bed and I'm flipping out and just tearing sheets and blankets off the bed and my poor husband is like, I need to go to work tomorrow and he's trying to get the blankets back up. So they do make for some funny stories after the fact, not so much during it because it can be absolutely terrifying but if you do suffer from night terrors know that you are not alone especially if you're an adult because this generally happens more often in children so if you're an adult with night terrors know that you're not the only person on the planet that has night terrors as an adult they are terrifying and they can disrupt your sleep so know that you are not alone and that you are not crazy that it is a real thing that you can suffer from and that it can really mess with your sleep cycle. There have been some nights where I'm scared to go to sleep because of what happened the night before. So it is a real thing. But please know that there are options out there for you and I do suggest going to see a, a specialist or at least a therapist because therapists can help you discover some underlying trauma or something that happened in your life that can help reduce the amount of night terrors that you have. The reason I made this video was just to bring awareness to night terrors as an adult and also because I, <laughs> I can't describe like make things to help my sleep if I don't tell you why I'm having problems sleeping in the first place. So there's that. If you are interested in learning about chronic illnesses, disabilities, or handicaps, or you just want to learn about what life is like in general with chronic illnesses, then go ahead and click that subscribe button and go ahead and click that like button if you did enjoy this video. Remember to be kind. Kindness is free, especially to yourself. So give it out to everyone and I'll see you next time. Bye. Say hi. Do you see the window? Yeah, you don't normally see that window, do you? He's scared of heights, so he doesn't jump up very much. 
Anyway. Hey, bud. My, my ADHD is not working well with you sitting there because I can't think. Can I snuggle you after? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Can I snuggle you afterwards? Mm. Yeah? Can I snuggle you afterwards? Thank you. Okay. Yes, I'm happy to see you too. But I'm busy. I'm busy. Yes. <sighs> I swear, sir, I sure do love you. I really do. I love you so much. But mom is busy. I have things to do. I have like this much energy to get a video done every week. Like this much. And I need to use that energy. When I don't have the energy is when I can snuggle you. So after I'm done with this, I can snuggle you, okay? Okay. Mm, I love you, though. Yes, and I'll give you a treat after, okay? Okay. <laughs>